Hi, I'm Michael Killen, and as much of the world, at least the more educated people around the world in this new decade, they're all clamoring for solutions that stop climate change, because climate change has the potential of wrecking everybody's life, every country, everywhere. Now, on this particular show, I've invited Dr. Alex Canara. He is an expert in topics such as energy, nuclear energy, as well as ocean acidification. I want to ask him a few questions, and the questions I want to ask has to do with an amazing development. Recently, the third largest economy of the world, Japan, announced it's going to build 22 dirty coal plants. This is an unheard of development. Dr. Kanara, <laughs> how are you today? Okay, with that lead in, boy, I well, have to perform. What? Now, by the way, the Japanese people are some of the most educated, right. literate people in the world, and they've contributed so much to society, to culture, and everything else, and they're very proud people. Why? Why in the world would such <laughs> a developed nation even consider building one plant, coal plant, and now they want to build 22? Mm -hmm. Can you give me one of the, the main reasons why they want to do that? Right. Well, energy is essential to the Japanese economy, per perhaps more so than almost any other country, because they're a landlocked country. They, they don't have many resources of their own, particularly for f fuel for the industry that they have. And so they must, they must depend upon the external world uh, and science in order to get the energy they need to keep the country going. And the problem has been that ever since the Fukushima Daiichi accident in 2011, uh, they entered a shutdown mode for their nuclear plants, uh, which are about 40 or so reactors. And that deprived them of a huge amount of clean energy, something like uh, 30 to 40 percent of the energy that Japan needed to keep functioning. As a result of the, the accident there, a reevaluation of all nuclear in, in Japan was entered, and plants were checked for safety and so forth. Only the Fukushima plant had failed, and only because of a corrupt regulation that allowed them to build it at sea level. And that's a whole other story, but it, it has to do with how companies function with the government in Japan. Uh, okay. And that's that. But they've lost ex an exceedingly large amount of clean power. What is the main reason the country has decided to build 22 coal plants? And I think you answered half of the question. Right. And you said it's a landlocked country. And it's a country that has to import right. coal, oil, or other. Right other sources for electricity. Right. But the main reason has to do with there was a disaster that killed 1,800 people or 18,000? Well, about 16 8 to 18,000 people by the tsunami uh, yes. in 2011. Had nothing to do with the nuclear plant. It had to do with the fact that people were living and working in a known tsunami zone. and the government allowed that and, and so many people were killed. I mean, we, you can go back and look at some of the videos of it. It's so, horrific, horrific. So Japan has a history of having earthquakes occur off of its shore, right. which creates tsunamis. And they've had multiple tsunamis that have killed multiple people. And I right. think there's been one tsunami years ago that took out 150,000 people. And now, compared to what happened in Fukushima, how many people were killed? Uh, well, nobody was killed by the no, Fukushima no, no. plant. How many people were killed, period? Oh, total? About 18 or 19,000. 19,000. And what killed them? 
the government land use policy. No, basically. no, no. Water killed them. Oh, water killed them. Okay. Come on, Alex. Yes, right. Tsunami, they did not have protection for tsunami for the population that lived and worked in the Sendai plant. Right. Now, years ago, when 150,000 people were killed, right. what did they have? 10 nuclear power plants well, there? They, didn't, they, didn't, they had none. They had none. Right. People that got killed at Fukushima had nothing really to do with the nuclear power plant being there. It right. had about 1% of anything. Yes. Now, in more detail, tell me how people were killed at Fukushima. Well, obviously the tsunami comes in, floods, destroys homes, drowns people. A lot of people were swept out to sea when the tsunami retreated. Uh, you can find videos of, of that happening on the internet. And just Google it and you're all set. People were there. Right. And if there was no nuclear power plant there and that tsunami hit, how many people would have been killed? Uh, the same amount. Same amount. And do you think the people of Japan have made <clears throat> that conclusion that it wasn't that there was a plant there that caused all those deaths. This was simply an earthquake and a tsunami. Right. And it hit the land where a lot of people lived. Right. Nothing to do with the nuclear power plant. Yes, that's true. And the problem is, uh, the, unfortunately, that in Japan, the, the, the newspapers in Japan are typically uh, anti-nuclear. So the event was actually reported in such a way that Japanese citizens became afraid of nuclear power, even though that was one of their major sources of clean energy before the tsunami. And even though the tsunami is what killed thousands of people. Uh, and so as a result, okay. people are afraid. And the people who were responsible for making sure that the nuclear plants after the tsunami were safe and making sure they corrected anything that was uh, a problem, that effort ran into local uh, fears of nuclear in general. These people that were killed and harmed, you told me offline before this show started, a lot of them were injured and killed because the government moved out 100,000 people, people, or something. You correct yeah, well, me. People who are in that. hospitals, right. people who need medicine, whatever. Right, right, and the government right. was not able to take care of all of these people. Yes, there were about 1,000 people who were evacuated after the tsunami from the area that were infirm. And a lot of those people uh, and died because of their being moved. OK. Could we now go to the point of what have we learned from the Fukushima disaster, which pales from the disasters right. that they've had from other earthquakes. It right. pales, but it's, right. of course. They have a major a event, thing. like you say, every 150 or so years. It seems to me they learned not to build anything of significance in a yes. dangerous area. Right. That right. is number one. Right, right. What else have they learned? Uh, they have they have learned that they need to increase the amount of power generated now that they've closed a bunch of nuclear plants to be able to run their economy. So what they have learned is the loss of life by that disaster that had nothing to do with the nuclear energy plant right. to speak of. Right. They have taken a look at all the plants that they have right. and to satisfy public opinion and probably some government officials who really do not understand mm -hmm. the situation, they decided to shut down for a time being their nuclear power plants. But yes, right, and they, exactly, it's, it's a psychological issue, both, and it's a political issue because it's a psychological issue. So as I said, there are some, a large number of newsprint in Japan that's anti-nuclear and the politicians have to deal with that and so do the local jurisdictions have to deal the with that. The prefectures. 
Yes. Now, did they also take a look at the coal burning plants in their country to see if they were in a zone that could be wiped out by an earthquake or a tsunami? Uh, I believe they certainly did because we know of at least one plant that exploded because of the earthquake and tsunami that was not a nuclear plant. Okay. My family says to me, the plant at Fukushima, the nuclear plant, yeah. let out a tremendous amount of cancer-forming, cancer-creating chemicals. Is that true? No, no, it's not at all. I mean, the, the, currently, one of the issues that uh, anti-nuclear groups focus on in Japan is the amount of water that has been captured that was in, used in cleaning up the plant or flowing groundwater under the plant, that has been captured and stored by TEPCO in these large steel tanks. And they have something like 10 million gallons of that water. And the water has a little bit of radioactive material, tritium, um, some strontium, some cesium perhaps. But they have cleaned it up as, as pretty much as they can. So if you released all that water into the ocean, the question is what would happen? Well, the Pacific Ocean is at least 200 billion, billion gallons of water. And that's 10 to the 18th times 200, 20 zeros after a two. A lot of water. A lot of water. And you've got only 10 million in the tanks they've got. So sure, you could release it because the water in the ocean is already radioactive from all the minerals that come into the ocean because everything goes into the ocean. If I spilled this glass of water into the ocean, would it have, as I'm spilling it on myself, <laughs> right. would it have about the same impact on the ocean as those X number of gallons that they well, it, it, yeah. If you if you yeah. dump that in your swimming pool, you know it it, it would be about the same. Insig so it's insignificant. Yes, right, right. Okay. But the problem is that there's psychology involved with the nuclear as you raised the nuclear issues in Japan, and only a certain number of of uh, uh, governing bodies like the prefectures where nuclear plants exist in Japan have successfully restarted them. Legally, right. So now they have to find some substitute because they need energy to run the economy. So you sure. mentioned coal. Okay. And if they do that, they're going to increase their emissions. And we can see uh, we have an increase in emissions right after Fukushima. And if we look at this, this uh, other picture of the stone that was placed by ancestors of, uh, in the Japanese towns in the, in the region of Sendai, you mentioned that, well, they have had tsunamis before, and that's exactly what the stone says. It says, don't build from here to the ocean because tsunamis come in here. Now, it's, it's carved in stone by ancestors, so they must be serious. They're trying to warn their descendants, and, they've, and we ignored that, or the Japanese ignored that. Let's now, put it that way. Do you think the Japanese have learned that they have to be a little bit more careful with the big corporations and not let those corporations influence mm -hmm. government policies. Yes. And MIDI and other organizations that run the country have to support strong regulators mm -hmm. that monitor, examine, analyze what the companies want to do and what they're doing. Right. And do you think what happened at Fukushima was in part a result of the government not being strong, stringent, and wise in dealing with all the factors, all the different parts of the economy, right. and allow right. something like that right. to be built there. Was right. That That's exactly what happened. The report about Fukushima accident that was written for the Japanese Diet, which is their Congress, uh, after the accident laid it all out. Corrupt relationship between TEPCO, which is one of the largest Japanese corporations, and the government and the regulator allowed TEPCO to build the plant in such a way that geologists said, it's going to be flooded because we have tsunamis every 150 years. We know it's going to be flooded. So even before the plant was operating, it had been predicted to fail as it did. And unfortunately, the government and TEPCO being very much intertwined for the benefit of the, their economy as they see it, 
uh, allowed a defective design to be implemented. Of all the 41 or so nuclear reactors operating in Japan on March uh, 11th, 2011, when the earthquake and tsunami struck, only Fukushima Daiichi failed. Only okay. that, one, that one plant with three reactors failed. Okay, before I go on to another aspect of this topic, Japan goes ahead and builds 22,000 coal burning plants. 22. 22, how many did I say? Thousand, but we'll I take a thousand saying, off. Why do I keep? You, you, you like big numbers. That's twenty-two plants. Yeah. It's good you correct me. <laughs> but if they go ahead and build right. twenty-two coal-burning plants, how is that going to harm the people of Japan? What will be the impact of the little children, the right. old folks? Mm -hmm. The middle-aged folks. Right, What's going right. to be the impact? Well, there will be thousands of people, uh, dip depending on where the plants are built. But Japan is a landlocked nation, so it has to be. They have to be built relatively near populations. There will be thousands of people who contract diseases uh, and die because of airborne pollution. There's no doubt about that. That's what happens with coal plants. That's what happened everywhere else. So this is like cancer of the lungs and the kidneys, yeah, the prostate, Yeah, I mean, there's a, a study of Germany currently that shows that they're willing, they're killing about uh, 1,100 people a year from their coal plants. Well, let me just think about that for a moment. Germany, one of the biggest economies, well, certainly the biggest in Europe, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. they, they shut down nuclear plants a while ago. Yeah. And they had this mindset that renewable energy, wind and solar right, right. Would, would fill their needs. And it could not. And so probably they're burning more coal or continuing to burn coal. Right. And worse than coal, they burn soft coal or lignite, which is not hard coal. Now, how many people are dying as a result of those Well, the estimate plants? is that it costs Germany about a billion dollars a year and about 1,100 citizens die because of the pollution from their coal burning. A, a billion dollars a year for what, medical treatments or for what? For just general cost to the, yeah, general cost to the economy of more expensive electricity, more medical problems, uh, and then plus the, the death rate because of the uh, increased pollution. Forgive me, but would you repeat the number of people in <laughs> Germany. I mean, this is Well, important. the estimate is, is, is 1,100. This is a paper that was just out in, in December of last year. Is this uh, like from the World Health Organization no, or no, the World no. Bank? No, 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 three, three researchers. The paper is quite available. Science, science is about figuring out what's real, what's reality. Science is a study of reality. The reality is if you burn something that makes smoke, and so forth, you're, and you have people and animals breathing it, you're gonna have some disease. Forgive me, how many people in Germany die every year? Well, 1,100 is the estimate, yes. God, that's a lot of people. Well, that's, Jesus, in five it years. It could be more, we don't, that, this is an estimate based upon you know, German medical records and, and uh, their coal burning, burning records and so forth. And now, if the Japanese build 22 plants. Yeah, right, right. Then I think they have, I, I don't know if they have less people than Germany does, but let's just say 1,100 people will die. Okay, and now what else should I ask you here? Um, well, first of all, I think we have a picture up there of the Minister of the Interior, uh, of the Environment for uh, the new minister, yeah. The new, and he's coming under attack by some people. And I think his name is Shinjuro Kazumi. Kazumi, yeah. And I think he's new, and people have asked him, um, what about the plan to build 22 why, plants? Why do you want to do coal, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think he's just said, well, I'm going to look into it. He should. What do you think? <laughs> you know, Japan has a lot of cars, I think, Right? Yes, yes, they don't drive that far. They but, don't drive mm -hmm. as far. But they're an advanced mm -hmm. country, in some yeah, areas more yeah. advanced than us. Right. They will probably move very quickly, more quickly than a lot of places to the electric vehicle. Sure. And so what does that mean 
on the burning of coal. Oh, so, well, that's another thing that uh, entirely, uh, like in California, where we're pushing electric vehicles, the problem is an electric vehicle in a day typically uses the same amount of energy as a house. So that means that we're going to have e EVs consume a, double our, our electrical uh, c consuming. So the load on our electrical system will about double if we actually fully electrified, you know, cars, buses, trains, so forth. That's something that is significant. And in Japan, it would mean that, well, the coal is going to be part of the part of the thing that's driving the EVs. Yeah. <laughs> so Japan moves from combustible engines, the electric vehicles, right, right. to reduce greenhouse gases, and then they charge up the cars with, with fossil fuel yeah. and okay do you think if they go japan goes ahead with 22 plants do you think they'll become a pariah with well I, I don't think they're quite as big as germany in the sense that germany's in the middle of europe and their emissions go to every country so as far as being a pariah i think germany's got the, the lead what do you think about the Japanese financial industries being one of the leaders in investing in coal plants in places like Indonesia, Vietnam, mm -hmm. and yeah. maybe Australia and other places? What do you think of that? Is, is that something? Yeah, that's terrible. That? That's, that's uh, obviously something has to be done at the governmental level. I mean, Australia has a problem, too, because they have a lot of coal that they can sell to other countries, and they do that. And their current government is very coal business oriented. So, you know, it, it all comes down to what the government, government of each country knows, values, and does. Do you think political leaders in Japan one of these days is going to say, Wait a second. What we're doing with this 20 through 2 coal plants is deadly. And should we have, like the country has done in its history in the past, had a massive education program mm -hmm. to pull the whole country together? Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you think that they might do something like that? To uh, they certainly have the capability to do that. I, I would certainly, I hope they would do that because education is the key uh, to having a functioning country. I think even President Roosevelt said that education is key to democracy. Okay, and now I'd like to go to the topic that you like a lot, <laughs> and that's you've inculcated into every gene in your body. Really? What would you like the Japanese to do with nuclear technology? Well, uh, it's a social problem currently because, unfortunately, because of the way uh, newspapers and other media outlets treated the Fukushima event, uh, not as a failure of regulators, a political failure of the government and TEPCO and, and the regulator, but as something inherently bad with nuclear power which is not at all true. Fukushima was improperly built, had nothing to do with nuclear power. Mm -hmm. It was Good. built improperly. So because of influence between TEPCO and, and the government. So what Japan could do with educating the citizenry is simply to be honest about all that. And I think the report that came out after the event at Fukushima that the Diet Commission covered all this. But that has to be propagated out through the media so they aren't automatically anti-nuclear, that they actually educate the populace. So in these prefectures where they haven't restarted a known safe nuclear plant, the populace would understand that they should restart it because it is safe, because they've had a legitimate engineering and regulatory investigation of that particular plant, let's say, and it should be restarted so that we can eliminate some of the coal or some of the gas. Japan spent a great deal of money after Fukushima event buying liquefied natural gas from the US and other countries, 
like Indonesia, they spent billions of dollars on natural gas that they would not have had to spend if they had simply restarted their nuclear plants promptly. That money's gone. The money is gone from the Japanese economy. Adding coal means that they're going to be spending money, not so much money because coal is cheaper, but they're going to be spending more money outside the, the country, not serving the populace the way they should, even polluting the populace to some extent because of that. So if the prefectures uh, actually, the, the governments actually stimulated honest evaluation of the populace's knowledge about the nuclear plants in their region, they could restart all of them if they, if they wanted to. Okay, what's the biggest, most important trend today in nuclear energy? Uh, I would say around the world, China, Russia, and we, to some extent, other countries, are developing modular nuclear power plants that can have, let's say, eight modules, each of which can be separately serviced, refueled, and so forth. So the plant doesn't have to shut down for a, a month, half of it. It can just take one eighth of it and send it back to the factory to be refueled and refurbished. That's the small modular reactor business that you hear about. And there are two kinds there. There's the shrinkage of a current kind of nuclear plant that uses water and uranium, solid uranium. Okay. And there's the molten salt reactor, which uses hotter molten salt, runs more efficiently, generates more power per atom of uranium, let's say. So we've got those two uh, based upon a modular design so that they are very flexible. You can install as many reactors as you need, and, and that's it. And to an extent, they can be built in a factory. Prefab. And they can be built. The idea of one of the companies that's working on this with Indonesia, Thorcon, is that you build it in, in the same kind of shipyard that you would build a, sh a ship or a barge. One more question. Am I correct? Uh, Bezo, the founder of Amazon, just announced Bezos? Oh, yeah. 10, 10 billion, and one of the three areas he wants to put the money in is modular, small modular nuclear plants. Sure. Now, the guy is pretty smart to become the richest yeah. man in well. the world. So, okay, we're getting ready to close. What's the most important thing? You got about 30 seconds. If they are smart, they'll continue to increase their clean power, primarily nuclear output, and continue to decrease their gas, coal, and so forth, which have to be imported. Okay. Trying to educate the average person about what they should know about energy and Including climate. me, including me. Again, my guest has been Dr. Alex Canara. I am Michael Killen, killen.com. <laughs>